At present, the Russian Aerospace Forces have only two Tupolev Tu-214P aircraft for electronic and optical reconnaissance, according to estimates by open sources. It is believed that the general staff, the primary customer, and the Kazan Aviation Production Association are locked in a lengthy legal dispute, which is the reason for the limited supply of these aircraft. In the mid-1990s, the concept of converting the Tu-214 into a patrol aircraft was proposed. It competed against the A-42 of the Bariv Design Bureau and won the tender. If you think A-42 amphibious aircraft was an odd choice, I have addressed it later in the story. On February 19, 1996, the government issued a resolution to create a patrol aircraft based on the Tu-214. A wooden prototype of the aircraft with designation P was created by Tupolev. P stands for patrol. The Tu-214P was initially scheduled to be delivered to the customer in November 2008. However, it completed its inaugural flight in November 2009 and was subsequently operational in 2013. The military demanded substantial penalties amounting over 1 billion rubles and directed these demands to Tupolev, the contractor under the tripartite agreement with the manufacturer. Tupolev tried to shift the blame to Kazan, creating a stalemate in the process. The Russian military desperately needs these aircraft. The Tu-214P is capable of detecting and transmitting information on the location and characteristics of a variety of military targets, including radar stations, command posts, communication centers, and military convoys, in the event that a suitable satellite reconnaissance group is not available. The aircraft's radars stand out by their capacity to perform ground-penetrating radar surveys, which enables them to identify objects that are below ground. The Tu-214P is capable of locating command posts or underground storage facilities that are concealed beneath snow, sand, or vegetation. It can then transmit the coordinates to a command center for potential destruction. The patrol version is equipped with an electro-optical system that generates high-resolution aerial photographs, electronic intelligence systems, and numerous multi-directional and side-looking radars. It is also capable of detecting powerful radio stations and hostile radars from a distance of up to 400 kilometers. A company called Vega has devised the multifunctional radar system MRK411, which combines all of these capabilities. This system is equipped with multiple antennas that are equipped with active phased array radars. These radars are capable of operating in both active and passive modes without disclosing the aircraft's location. Therefore, they serve as the operator's eyes and ears, facilitating radio interception. The aircraft was deployed to Syria for reconnaissance operations in 2014, when Turkey denied Russian aircraft the right to inspect its territory under the Open Skies Treaty. An integrated high-resolution electro-optical system, Fraxia, is located under the aircraft's nose in addition to the MRK-411. This system enables reconnaissance in both the visible and infrared spectrum. The Fraxia system can identify targets through its own algorithms or external target designation. For example, it is capable of identifying the target's location by analyzing radio emissions detected by the MRK-411 radar system. The reconnaissance aircraft has been employed by Russia on several occasions to identify military assets of the Ukrainian armed forces during special operations. In 2022, Russian news media reported that a modernized Tu-214P carried out multiple sorties along the western border of Russia. The aircraft can monitor railway trains and convoys, detect equipment and personnel moving toward the front lines, and possibly contributed to the recent success in neutralizing HIMARS launchers. The Tu-214P is capable of operating alongside other Russian reconnaissance aircraft, such as the IL-20, IL-22, and the A-50, AWACS aircraft, due to its advanced technology. The aircraft is divided into three zones, an equipment area, operator workstations, and a rest area. These aircraft are capable of flying for an extended period of time. Now, let us talk about the other reconnaissance versions. Right after the aerospace tender, the Naval Aviation launched another tender for a patrol aircraft. Albatross A-42 won the tender. The financing of Tu-214 anti-submarine aircraft was actually stopped. The Navy invested a lot into Albatross, 
but the anti-submarine aircraft did not appear. Even trials did not begin. Tu-214 based on stationary airfields costs much less, some experts said. An amphibian is always more costly than an ordinary aircraft. The infrastructure for A-42 is very expensive. However, a detailed analysis of A-42 and Tu-214 concepts showed the price gap is not too big. A 42 has several advantages. The Navy men were inspired by its ability to land on water. However, the advantage disappears as the weather often does not allow landing in seas and oceans where the Russian fleet operates. Rough seas do not allow A-42 to land. In 2020, it was reported that the Naval Command had prepared technical requirements for the newest anti-submarine aviation complex, PLAK, which would be based on the TU-204 passenger liner, or its TU-214 variant. The plan is to convert already produced aircraft into combat machines. These sources stated that the PLAK will also include new robotic submarine hunting systems and anti-submarine weapons. In addition to conventional sonar buoys and onboard search equipment, the aircraft will deploy unmanned boats from the air. Experts believe the system will pose a serious threat to enemy nuclear submarines. The Tu-204 and Tu-14 aircraft are comparable in characteristics to the Boeing 737-800, which serves as the base aircraft for the American P-8 Poseidon Naval Reconnaissance Aircraft. In addition to the requirements for the armed forces, two more reconnaissance planes, the Tu-214-ON, were built for observation flights under the International Open Skies Treaty. The Rossiya Special Flight Unit, which serves top state officials, also operates Tu-214s in versions designed for command posts, relay stations, and special communication hubs. Why do you think that the armed forces of a nation with such a large territory have only two of these aircraft in service? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share the videos and subscribe to the channel. Please also take our memberships to encourage us.